Hello, in this video today, we're going to look at how plants use the glucose they produce from photosynthesis, but never miss an opportunity to do a recap. So we are going to just remind ourselves of the word equation for photosynthesis. Remember, it was carbon dioxide and water makes glucose, which is a sugar, the food for the plant, plus oxygen, which is a waste. It's a waste product, so it's gotten rid of. We can do a formula equation. This is quite straightforward. Carbon dioxide is CO2, water is H2O, oxygen is O2, and glucose, slightly trickier, but it's C6H12O6. And if we want to balance it, we just chuck in some sixes in front of everything except the glucose. So where does this happen? This happens in the leaf, and the leaf is the organ of photosynthesis. It's designed specifically to carry out the maximum amount of photosynthesis possible. And as a result, we get the production of quite a lot of glucose. What we want to look at is actually what happens with the glucose once it's been made. So the whole point of making it is for the plant's food, but there are five different uses of that substance. Remember, oxygen diffuses out of the stomata from usually the underside of leaves. Right, so what's the first use of glucose? Well, same as in animals, the first use is to release energy from the process of respiration. So respiration will release energy and the plants will use it to build molecules, to break down molecules, um, and they need to respire just, as, just the same as any other living thing. Now, plants usually produce more glucose than they immediately need, so some of it is stored away. So it's converted into a substance called starch, which is insoluble. It doesn't dissolve in the cytoplasm, so it will stay where it is once it's been uh, stored away in cells. So that's good for storage for later use. The third use is also for storage, but it's in the form of fats and oils. So plants do also have fats and oils. If you think of olive oil, vegetable oil, probably one or two others you can think of. Um, and that's often found in seeds as an energy store for growing seeds. The fourth use is for building something, and that is building cellulose for the cell walls around all the cells in a plant. The fifth use is also for building, and that's to build proteins. And that's done via the process of making amino acids. So the glucose is used to make amino acids, and that then goes through the process of protein synthesis, which is basically making proteins. There is one more ingredient that we need in order to do, in order to do that, and that is nitrate from the soil. So we've got glucose made in photosynthesis, plus some nitrate ions that are brought up from the soil, which combines with the glucose to make the amino acids, and then the proteins can be made. So there we've got also, we need nitrate from the soil to make our amino acids and therefore to make our proteins. Okay, so those are the uses. Now, this is memory work. Remember, there's five different uses, and it might just be useful to go over it in a slightly different way to make it memorable. So here we've got glucose in the middle, and we're gonna talk about the uses. Remember, there were five uses to remember. So one, two, three, four, five. First one, keyword release, then store, store, build, build. So what are we releasing? We're releasing energy from respiration, storing as starch, storing as fats and oils, and then building something. What was that? Well, it was cellulose to build cell walls and building proteins from amino acids. There was one more detail to remember about that, and that was the fact that we also need nitrate from the soil to help us build those amino acids with the glucose. Okay, so there it is, release, store, store, build, build. And maybe a little diagram next to each one might help. So I don't know, this is um, supposed to be energy being released, like a flash of light and heat. Um, storing as fats and oils. Uh, I don't know, we could use that image there. Little fat fella. And oils, little drop of oil. And um, for cell walls, we can build a, a wall. So here we go, there's a wall. I've done it in green to remind us it's in plants and each one of those bricks, I guess, is a bit like a cell. For building, we can go from a small plant to a large plant. That, remember, that's building proteins for growth. And there we go. Now, storing a starch, that's quite a tricky one. So there's supposed to be a store, like a cupboard or something. 
starch I'm not sure what diagram we could use there but sometimes you know, just have to bite the bullet and remember the word you're supposed to remember as a word so we can just remember it as starch and in fact that store we can use for number three as well so we could probably go over it just one more time just with the images and just a couple of key words so those images should help you remember that it was number one the release of energy two was store as starch number three my favorite one store as fats and or oils number four was building a cellulose wall and number five was building proteins with amino acids